Hi, I'm Denshi, and today we're going to be doing a setup video for 2022. Now, this is a yearly tradition on my channel. I just talk about the programs I use and just how I use my computer. So let's get into it as soon as possible. The first thing you're probably dying to know, at least according to most of the comments I seem to get on my channel, is what Linux distribution do I run? What, what X do I use? What file manager do I use? What color scheme do I use? Now, let me just tell you up front that pretty much 90% of that stuff is irrelevant. But I'll tell you anyways. So first of all, the Linux distribution I use, opening up my terminal over here and running NeoFetch. As you can see, it's Arch Linux, good old Arch Linux. Uh, and yeah, I haven't switched away from it. Now the reason I use Arch Linux is just because, you know, the packages are updated and I have access to the AUR. And with the AUR and all those new packages, if I need a piece of software, I can basically install it in one line. But anyways, you're probably wondering about, you know, this terminal uh, and this window manager and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're not too familiar with Linux, you're probably wondering, what's going on over here. This is a window manager. This is a very minimal desktop kind of environment, desktop system. And long story short, this software is called DWM. And with DWM, as soon as you open any window, it automatically fills the screen. And if you open any other window, that splits the screen in two, and the window that you just opened gets put into focus on the left side. And every other window on your screen gets delegated to the right side. So if I open an additional window, as you can see, all of these other windows have been delegated uh, to the right side. Now, I'm not a complicated person. I don't have all these complicated DWM relationships, which a lot of people seem to set up. Instead, I just have a simple setup where you open a window, then you open another, then you open another, then you open another, and stuff like that. I just like having it automatically sorted for me because I don't like to open up a computer and start, you know, faffing about, you know, putting this over here, and, you know, putting this over here, and then putting this and forgetting the order in which they are. I like this automatic system. Now, the way I'm able to drag them is on DWM. If you hold down the meta key uh, or whatever key you've assigned and just click on a window, you can drag it about. And if you right click on it, you can change its size. So that's how I'm doing that. That's the bindings for that. If you want to see all the bindings. I'll have all the dot files, all the configuration linked in the description so you can check it out and see for yourself. Or you can download it and try it out and see the kind of stuff that I've customized. Because of course, I've customized the key bindings to the stuff that I like. I can press Windows E to open the file manager. I can press Windows F to open the web browser. I can press Windows T to open the terminal. Uh, and there's a few more which I'm going to talk about. But for now, those are the main ones. Now, speaking of the web browser, uh, you're probably wondering what web browser I use. If you click the three little dots and go to about, I'm using ungoogled Chromium. Now, ungoogled Chromium is the same as Google Chrome, except every single little bit of Google has been stripped out. All of the elements of Chrome that phone home back to Google have been stripped out. Basically, a bunch of bloat really has been removed, which makes it faster. You know, there's less latency. And of course, it's not phoning home to Google, which is a benefit when you don't want to be spied on. I also have Firefox installed, you know, just in case I need to use it. But most of the time I get perfectly by uh, with this. But anyways, the terminal, I've already mentioned it before, but I use this software called ST or simple terminal. So I can run ST and launch a terminal from within my own terminal. Uh, but long story short, there's nothing really fancy going on over here. The most fancy things I've added is the transparency that you can see. You can kind of see the mountains in the background in the terminal as I drag it about. Uh, and I've also added the scroll so you can scroll up and down. And I've added this thing where you can press page up and page down to decrease and increase the size. And the reason for that is because I do a lot of tutorials. I need to increase and decrease the size of the text so people find it easier to read. So that's basically it for the terminal and I can basically, you know, delete it now. There's a few other things I wanted to touch upon, uh, which first of all is the icons you're seeing in the top right corner over here. This is just the OBS icon. That's the fact that I'm recording this. But this over here, you're probably wondering what that is. That is called KeePass XC. It is a KeePass software. And if you don't know what KeePass is, it's a standardized format for password storage. It's encrypted, it's secure, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, long story short though, I've got a few fancy things configured here in KeePass XC because KeePass XC gets very, very advanced if you know how to use it. The first thing I'm going to mention is something quite simple. Now, if you look at the top of my screen, you'll see there's kind of this panel with all of these, you know, different numbers. There's this little icon over here. Uh, and there's all of this, which, you know, we're going to touch on that later, all of this text over here. The main thing about this panel is you can use something called Dmenu. Dmenu is a software that lets you create a menu over here at the top of your screen. Now, I use Dmenu for two things. First of all, I use this menu over here. This comes built in with DWM. This is a menu to launch all the programs in your system. On my system, you press Windows and then press P and then it launches this. And if I want to name a program, like for example, Chromium, that's the web browser I use. 
I can type it over there and press enter. And as you can see, it will launch. So that's the launch programs. But I've also got it configured using a software called KP menu. I'll have that linked in the description as well to check all of my passwords. So I can press Windows and then the O button uh, and it will open up this menu. I can show entries, I can reload the database or I can exit. I'm gonna show the entries. I'm gonna blur them out for pretty obvious reasons. But basically I can look through all of these uh, and select one of them and then start going through them and say, okay, you know, now that I've selected one of them, I can pick the password, the username, the URL, the title of it. And I can then once I've clicked that, like, you know, the username, and let me just press enter. Now that I've done that, that's copied to my clipboard. And if I open up the terminal, I'll copy paste the username here. It's just admin, as you can see. But basically you can copy and paste stuff from this password menu. But basically that makes stuff like password management and copying, and pasting your passwords much faster because you're doing it with a keyboard. You don't have to go and click about an interface for two hours looking for what you're looking for. But anyways, now that we've covered that, I want to touch upon a few more things. One big thing I want to talk about is all the scripts that I wrote. Now you can download my scripts from my Codebrook page. In fact, let me just open that up. There it is, codebrook.org, Denchi scripts. And there's a description of pretty much all of them down here in the readme. So let's run through all of these. Now the first one uh, in order of, you know, in alphabetical order is called CVRT. Now, I've made a video on that and long story short, CVRT, it's a program where you can put images or videos or whatever into it and then tell it what format you want to output it in uh, and it will automatically do that for you. Now this software is based on FFmpeg uh, and it works really, really well because it can take regular expressions. You can say, okay, do all of these files and it will do it. Unlike FFmpeg where with FFmpeg, FFmpeg can only take one file at once, which is a bit limiting, so that's why I wrote that script. Mplode is a bit of a more obscure script. I described it over here. Basically, it's a script that automatically will take any audio file, it will rip the metadata from it, and then it will make YouTube videos with it. So like, for example, if you have an audio file with like a, a cover on it, with like an album cover, it will rip that, it will make you a thumbnail for the video, and then it will make a video using that cover art, like what you see on YouTube. So it's basically a script that copies YouTube's algorithm for making music videos. But after that, the next script we're gonna talk about is something which you'll probably find quite useful. A screenshot is a very, very simple script that you can run, just run it like that. Uh, and it will give you this prompt over here. It's, it's a bit laggy because I'm recording. Uh, but basically this system over here, this little uh, arrow, this is a program called Hacksaw. And you can either select a window by clicking on it like this, and then it will take a screenshot. Uh, or you can run that again and select a region like this, for example, and then it will take a screenshot of that. So if we open up our file manager, as you can see the first example, it just took a screenshot of our window because we just uh, ran screenshot and clicked on a window. And in the second example, it took a screenshot of our region. Uh, now I've actually done a keyboard binding for that. If you press print screen, it will automatically launch the program. And this is very useful, especially when I'm making videos. So I can just screenshot a part of the screen uh, and just it will automatically output it to my home directory and I can just use that in a video. So that's 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 been a lifesaver, honestly. That's probably one of the most useful scripts I've done. The next program is a little bit uh, simpler or a little bit, you know, less applicable into everyday life. But Ticker is a basic program that just takes any cryptocurrency ticker and outputs the price. So if I run ticker XMR, for example, it will output the price of Monero. Seems like the price of Monero has increased. Okay, I guess that's good. Uh, and then if I run ticker, I don't know, something stupid like that, which doesn't exist, it will give you an error. The last program I want to talk about is called YTID or YouTube ID. I wrote this because I was really frustrated trying to get RSS feeds for all my favorite YouTube channels uh, because they were kind of hard to find because not all channels on YouTube have the ID in the URL, especially older channels. And I tend to watch a lot of older channels. So basically what you can do is you can run the script YTID it-id and then you give it either a username or a channel URL. So in my case, I would run it with Denshi video. And then I would go and output my ID over here, which is that one, and an RSS feed. So you can copy and paste this. Now, if you go and edit the YT ID file itself, I have it stored in .local bin YT ID. There's actually different base URLs you can pick. So if you don't want to use YouTube, I know not everyone likes to use youtube.com. You can use different invidious instances and they still dish out RSS feeds. So just uncomment this line and comment out that line uh, and then the script will work with that instead. 
uh, but I'm not gonna do that. Anyways, now that my scripts are done, I wanna run through one last thing before we end this video. And that's just the basic software I use to make my videos. The video editing software I use is DaVinci Resolve. I've actually made a script just that's called Resolve and all it does is it launches Resolve. The image editing software I use is GIMP. I use this to make all of my thumbnails. I use this to do all of my image editing. I don't draw in GIMP. I tend to draw in Krita, but I haven't drawn in a long while on account of living in a hotel room and all of my stuff is packed into a box, including my drawing tablet. So I'm kind of stuck at the moment. But for most photo editing and image editing, GIMP is perfectly fine. And finally, the software I use to record everything is OBS right over here. Now it's recording at the moment. I'm running two instances, as you can see from the top over there. This is a fantastic software I've talked about a lot. And yeah, it's easy to set up once you you know get the ropes of it, but it's incredibly powerful. You can do a lot of stuff with OBS. And if I really got my mind to it, if I actually decided to set out an afternoon, I could probably get a very good streaming setup uh, out of OBS. But anyways, there's one thing which I forgot to address before we end this video, and that's what is this mysterious text at the top of the screen? This is a program called DWM Blocks. You can customize it to output anything you want to the screen. And in this case, what I've done is I have all the different time zones uh, that I really care about in the world. Eastern time, Italian time, the Sydney time, uh, and the local GSD, Gulf Standard time. I also have my battery percentage over here, and there's this system tray, but that's just a DWM modification. That's not part of any of this. And now you're probably wondering why I have random time zones in the top of my screen. The reason for this is because I'm terrible at remembering time zones. I'm terrible at working with time and like adding and subtracting hours. It just kind of racks my brain. I can't do it. So I like having the computer do it automatically for me right up here in the corner. Now, actually, speaking of the system tray, there's a lot more stuff you can add here. Like maybe you want a battery icon. Maybe you want a volume icon. You can get programs that do that, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. But anyways, you know, I've been Denshi. That was my video on my setup. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed watching and I hope you learned something, maybe. All the software I talked about here is linked in the description, all of my dot files, all the configs, all that kind of stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.